Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge, and in today's video, I'll show you how you can make a portable Final Cut Pro library that will take up a minimal amount of space on your hard drive using proxy media. There's a couple advantages to making a mobile proxy only library. The most obvious advantage is the amount of hard drive space you need. If you're traveling and only bring your laptop, especially if you edit longer videos with large file sizes, the amount of storage space you have on your laptop might be an issue. You could bring an external drive, but that's just one more thing you have to deal with and keep track of. Making a proxy only library before you go allows you to have all your footage right on your internal drive with only a fraction of the disk space needed. Also, proxy media is much easier and faster to edit, especially if you have an older laptop with maybe not the best specs and a bunch of 4K highly compressed footage. Trying to edit this footage can really slow you down with laggy playback and long render times. Editing proxy media requires considerably less computing power, allowing you to edit much faster on an older machine. So today, we'll go through all the steps of making a proxy-only library from import to export in your final project. To make a proxy-only library, like the one we'll make today, you do need some sort of external storage. For my example, I'll just use this portable SSD, but any kind of external or network drive should work just fine. First thing we have to do is move our media from the camera's memory card onto this external drive. In my example, I have over 16 gigs of footage on the card. We'll compare this number to the size of our proxy library at the end, just to see how much less space it needs. After moving your media to an external drive, open up Final Cut Pro and create a new library. Make sure the location of this library is on your built-in drive. If you want it in the default location, set the Movies folder, which can be found in your Home folder, as your saved destination. Next, with your library selected in the Media Browser, go to the Inspector window and set the proper storage locations so all your necessary media is on your internal drive. Click the Modify Settings button for the storage locations and make sure your media and cache files are stored inside your library. If you use Motion for any custom effects, also set this location to In Library. Click OK. Next, let's import some media into our library. Click the Import button, navigate to the external drive you move your media files to, and select all the media you want to import into this library. Over on the right-hand side, since we don't want the original media files on our internal drive, select Leave Files in Place. And for transcode options, select Proxy Media. If storage space is your main concern, use the H.264 codec, which makes smaller file sizes. If you're more worried about the performance of your machine, use the ProRes proxy format. The file sizes will be slightly larger than H.264, but the ProRes proxy codec is quite a bit easier to edit. For my example, I'll select H.264. You can also select the frame size, aka video resolution, for your clips. You can leave it the same as your source media, or to save more space, you can decrease it. For example, if you have 4K footage, setting this to 50% will decrease it to just HD. This will not affect your final export, since we'll switch back to original media for that, just the resolution you see when editing your project. I'll set mine to 50%. Click Import Selected to import your media. Depending on the amount of footage you have, transcoding all your media might take a bit of time. You can monitor the progress of this in the Background Tasks window. Once all your files are transcoded, you can eject your external drive. Since none of the original files were copied to your library, you'll see a bunch of missing media icons telling you that your media is offline. To see your media clips, you have to switch over to Proxy Media. At the top of the Viewer window, from the View drop-down menu, select Proxy Only. All your media files are back online. And if we select our library in the Media Browser, over in the Inspector, you can see this library is less than 2 gigabytes, as compared to over 16 of our original media. We can now go ahead and edit our project with significantly better performance. Once you're done editing your project, if you were to export it from here, you'd be exporting proxy files. That's not what we want. To export your project with the best quality possible, you need your original media files that are stored on your external hard drive. So once your video is finished and you have access to your external drive where all the media is stored, your project is ready for export. Connect your external drive and in Final Cut Pro, switch back to original media. 
Final Cut Pro looked for this media once already and couldn't find it, so it'll still show missing media icons. To force Final Cut Pro to look for the original media again, you need to quit and reopen it. Once Final Cut Pro restarts, all your original media files will be relinked to the files in your timeline, and your finished video is ready for export. This proxy media workflow has quite a few advantages, but it also has a few drawbacks. For one, as you just seen, you do need your external drive with the original media in order to export your video. Also, not all media types support transcoding to proxy media. Audio files, videos with an alpha channel, and still images can't be converted to proxy media. So if you use any of these file types, you will have to import them separate and copy these files to your Final Cut library. If you can live with that, making a proxy only library in Final Cut Pro is an awesome way to save hard drive space and significantly speed up your editing. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, let me know by hitting the like button and in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Thank <laughs> you.